I definitely do have a problem with Giannis's comments. And here's the reason why. You're Giannis. You're the reigning two-time league MVP who came up short not once or twice in the last two seasons from getting out of the Eastern Conference. You had a 2-0 lead in the conference finals against Kawhi and the Toronto Raptors and got blitzed four straight. Last year, bubble play or no bubble play, you didn't just lose. You lost in five. You got taken out mm. in five mm. games. I'm sorry, mm. that matters. And when that is the backdrop, when that is the last time we've seen you in the postseason, and then you mm. turn around and you're talking about, well, you know, I, you know, you, I don't know if we're going to win it. Oh, hell no. You got your $245 million contract extension, well-deserved, by the way, from Milwaukee in the offseason. They go out and they get you Drew Holiday. If one of the mm. executives knew how to keep their mouth shut, they would have had Bogdanovich as well. You acquired mm. P.J. Tucker. You still mm. kept, step, kept Chris Middleton. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know mm. we're look we looking at Brooklyn. But in, in all honesty, mm. Brooklyn is the only excuse mm. Giannis should have for not winning a chip. That should be the only thing we should be able to point to because LeBron and AD ain't 100%. The only thing we should be able to point to is Brooklyn as a reason you didn't win at all. So I don't want to hear about, (laughs) oh, we might lose to Miami in the first round. Damn it, you better not. You better not. God, Stephen, just my, just preaching the gospel out here. My God, I couldn't have said it better myself. Giannis is coming off one of the best three-year runs we've ever seen in NBA history. You're talking about best record in the league, best record in the conference, one of three players to win the MVP and defensive player of the year, one of the few players in league history to win back-to-back MVPs. Hey, maybe we give you a pass on the bubble. Maybe we give you a pass because you guys were just starting to develop two years ago when you had the 2-0 lead in the conference finals. But now... But now when you have more pieces, when you have a better team, and I'm not even worried about your record because, you know, you guys finish, you know, top three right where you're supposed to. Ultimately, when you look at that, they all went into this season like, hey, we're going to try some different things defensively. We're going to try some different things offensively. We need to be able to be more versatile. And this is the comment that you make. This is the comment that you make going into this postseason run. That, I'm sorry, doesn't breed confidence. I don't need MJ. I don't need Kobe. I've played with silent masters, Jason Kidd, Steph Curry, Tim Duncan. I've played with guys that let their game do the talking. I don't need bravado, but I do need my my leader, one of the great players in NBA history, to come up with a little bit more than like, hey, you know, we can lose to him again. Yes, everyone knows anybody can lose to anybody, but the confidence that you need to exude as a player with this type of talent, you haven't seen many statements like that from players of his caliber in NBA history, Max. NBA not everyone history, has you to be built the same like way. That. Richard, not everyone has to be built the same way. A lot of it's the way it's delivered. A lot of it is like when you look at the guy, you sizing him up. Did I see someone who lacked confidence or seemed insecure or, or, or anything like that? No, it did. he did not come off that way to me. He was asked a question. He gave you a direct answer. And by uh, the way, the Bucs did improve the team. Not as much as the Sixers improved their team. Not as much as the Nets improved Nets. their team. That, you know, the Bucks to me, on paper, do not look like one of the two best teams in the conference. I'm being, I'm being honest. Well, 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 Max, first of all, can we stop acting like we're ready to handcuff him and throw him in jail? We're saying we disagree with the damn comments, okay? Let, let, let's, let's pump the brakes here. That's all we're saying. We're saying that we don't necessarily like those comments, and here's the reason why. We talked about Harden and, and KD and Kyrie and how prolific this offense is, even though they, you know, they only, they've only played eight games together. They would happen to be the number two offense in the NBA. Do you know who number one is? That would happen to be the Milwaukee Bucks with Giannis averaging 28 and 11, with Chris Middleton averaging 20 and shooting nearly 40% from three-point range, along with guy like D, guys like DiVincenzo, Drew Holiday. P.J. Tucker is even shooting 39.4% from right. three-point range. When you look at the Milwaukee Bucks, now, Max, if he made this statement, even though we wouldn't like it, and you are about to go up against the Brooklyn Nets, I feel you. 
But when the statement is made about a first-round series against the team that bounced you out in five games, the last time we saw you, again, we ain't cuffing you and throwing you in prison. We're simply saying, yo, man, that ain't what we trying to hear. Not from yeah, a reigning two-time league MVP. To, that's all we're saying. To, he's not trying to tell us what we want to hear. That's not what he's there I, we doing. Know this, and, and, we and know by, this. And, and we know this. And we ain't – we ain't trying to do nothing. We just say we yeah, don't like it. Did he sound insecure to you? Is that how he sounded to you? Did he sound scared? No, but it's not about it's not it's not about him sounding insecure, Max. It's about the energy that he is putting out to his teammates, to the organization, to the fan base. It's not a matter of like whether Giannis had 50 against the Brooklyn Nets. We know this man can play. We know this man can ball. And look, the only reason, like when you say we don't need a Kobe or an MJ, we don't need him to be that. But we do want him to be great. We, he has established that he wants to be great. And I'm not saying, like, look, everybody makes statements. Everybody says stuff. Like, look, LeBron James called Steph Curry the MVP before they play against him. Was he setting up something or was he just kind of buttering him up so he wouldn't be as fired up? Who knows? There are tactical things that you can say vocally, whether it's to calm down something or to perk people look, up. Guys. At the end of the day, when a person has had this type of, like, this type of, like, three-year stretch, yeah. you got to show guys, here's some the problem, confidence. Richard. Here's the problem, Richard. Giannis is actually a big. Stephen A. identified that correctly when, to me, it looked like he's kind of a hybrid wing. But, no, he's really a big, actually. And in the history of the NBA, almost every time, a, a super great big needs another dude on his level if he's trying to win a Max, chip. Max, stay on point, bro. So, stay on this point. Is the, this is the point, Stephen that, A. That, this that, is that, the that, point. The they point is it's not unacceptable get to lose him. in the first round they against Miami. They did not Miami. get him. Don't sound that, like that. They did not get him that guy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.